Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate the cherry poster in Photoshop. I have included in the description of this video a link to all the assets that you need if you want to follow along and do the steps as I do them. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to do is go to File, Open, and first let's just take a look at this poster. So we've got um, a little tag here that's written in Helvetica, another Tom Holland here in Helvetica bold. Then we've got this cherry which is in a very extended type with a grunge effect on it. Um, and then we have this black and white photo that has um, a red gradient map on it and we've got this kind of grunge texture in the background so this is essentially what i want to recreate in photoshop and we're going to use our own photos for that so now that we've kind of studied this let's go ahead and close that document and we're going to go to file open again and i just found this image on unsplash um, i like it because it's kind of got a similar vibe with a guy and a girl and we've got a pretty clean background. So I think this, this image will work quite well. So first things first, let's go ahead and crop it. So I'm gonna go to the crop tool here and I want it on ratio and I want a two to three ratio. Uh, that's the ratio of a movie poster. And then we can start cropping. And for the crop, I basically want him really close to the top here and really just like right on the edge of this little lapel on his shirt and then maybe just a little more centered on him so maybe like we can use his ear as our center mark there and i think that is good so let's hit the check mark you can also just hit enter on your keyboard that's going to set the crop next thing i want to do is make this image the right size so we're going to go to image size and we're going to up res it. Let's change this to pixels. We're going to up res it to 2000 by 3000. Let's hit OK. And we can just go to our move tool or hit V. That puts you on the move tool. That's kind of your default tool. So um, what I want to do next is just clean up this so that we have more of a white background to work with. I always like to keep a copy of my original, so I'm gonna go ahead and just dump that in there, make a copy. You can also do that with Command J. And then I'm gonna zoom in here, holding Command and the space bar. And I guess hit the space bar first so you don't pull up your spotlight if you're using a Mac. And then you can just drag left and right to zoom in. All right, so we're gonna go onto our pen tool um, it's kind of my favorite tool to make curve precision um, selection. So we're just going to start maybe somewhere here. Click, drag. That's going to set the curve of your line. Obviously, I don't want much of a curve here, so I'm just kind of making it not curve very much. And then we're just going to follow along here the curve of his lapel. And then we're going to turn this into a selection when we're done. All right, so here I want a curve like so, but then I want the curve to end. So what I can do is hold down Option and just click on that, and it's going to cut off one side of our little handle, our curve handles there. And there you go. Now the rest of this is not that important, so we're just going to finish it off like that. Then right mouse click and say make selection. Um, I want this to have a 0.5 pixel radius. That's just going to make it a little more anti-aliased, meaning our edge isn't going to be quite as crisp. All right, next I'm going to go on to the brush tool, right mouse click, go on general brushes, and I just want a soft round pressure opacity brush. I'm going to make it quite a bit bigger about there. Eh, not quite that big. That's good. All right, 220 pixels. All right, then I'm going to hold down option that's going to allow me to select a color here. 
and that'll become my foreground color and then when I start painting it's going to use that color. So this isn't a pure white which is why I selected that color. Just make sure it matches up. All right now I want to drop this selection so I'm going to do command D. You can also go up here to deselect. All right, let's do Command-0. That's going to fit it in our view. And there you go. We have that done. Next thing I want to do is add a little more highlight to his hair here. Um, if we look at the original poster, you'll notice that the hair is pretty highlighted. So to do that, I'm going to add another layer. We can call this one Hair Highlights. And I'm just going to use a white brush. So I'm going to hit D on my keyboard and that's the same as clicking this. That defaults to black and white. And then I want to switch these. So I can either push this little double arrow icon here or hit X on the keyboard. That's going to make my foreground color white. And then we're just going to start painting right here. I'm going to put this layer on overlay. And there you can see now it's just giving me those hair highlights there where I want them and maybe a little bit on her. I don't want it quite so strong. So maybe something like this. Now you'll also notice that we're getting, well, it's probably a little hard to notice, but I can barely see it. There's a little bit uh, more white here than here. So I'm just gonna go on this layer here and then do image adjustments, curves, and you'll notice that my white point really starts here and this just these few pixels here is that little really light yellow so if i just drag my white point a little bit to the left here you can see that this yellow background is becoming more white so right about there is good okay the next thing we're going to do is just add some noise. And what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of some of this JPEG artifacting and it's actually going to make this image look higher resolution than it is. So to do that, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Layer. I'm going to turn this to Overlay. And then you'll see I have this Fill with Overlay Neutral Gray. If I click on that, I'm basically adding a neutral layer that's on Overlay. I can call this noise. You'll notice if I turn it on and off, it's doing nothing to the image. But if I add noise to it like this, you'll see that that noise is being added to the image. Now I don't want color noise. I want monochromatic noise and I want Gaussian noise. And that's really strong. I mean, pretty much anything over like 12 is totally fine. Let's hit OK. Even that's a little too strong. So what I can do is go to Filter, Blur, and just hit Blur once. And that's good. That's giving me some nice grain. If I think it's too strong, I can always turn it down a little bit, maybe 60%. OK, next we're going to add a grunge to this. So I'm going to go File, Place Embedded, and in our Assets folder, we have two grunge layers. I'm going to take the first one, Nucle Grunge, or sorry, Nucle Concrete 05. And this is part of my textures collection. Um, there's wood, concrete, and grunge. And the concrete work um, really well as alternates to the grunge and giving you that kind of grungy look. So this one here, I'm just going to turn it like this, scale it up a bit. And I just want the dark grunge in here. So what I'm going to do is do image adjustments curves and basically bring my white point to where the white in the image is. So to right about there, you can see that's basically bringing away everything but the white. Or sorry, making everything uh, really light and just leaving me the darker grunge. So something like this. I'm going to put this on multiply and you can see that's adding that nice grunge to the background. It's too strong. So let's set this to maybe 35% and I don't want it in the face area. So what I can do here is I can select my original image. I'll just call this image. Go on to my quick selection and then click on select subject. And that's going to select them out 
and then I can use that as a mask. Now, if I add a mask, it's gonna make the area inside my selection visible, and I want the opposite. So what I'm gonna do is, when I click on the mask icon, I'm gonna hold down the Option key, and that does the opposite. So now the grunge is just outside of them, not on top of them. So just like that. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is add a gradient map to create the red effect on the poster. So to do that, I'm gonna make my foreground color red. I've got my background color as black. Now when you add a gradient map, it'll go, the darks is your foreground color and the lights is your background color. So I actually wanna reverse these again. I'm gonna hit X to do that and then go here to gradient map. And there you can see it's added the gradient map exactly how I want it. Um, the one other thing you will notice in the original poster is that the bottom is a little bit darker in order to allow the text down here to show up a bit better. So to do that, I'm going to take my image and my hair highlights. I'm going to merge these two with Command E. I'm going to make a copy of this layer and put it on Multiply. There you can see it's made this part darker, but it's also made their faces darker, which I don't want. So I can just add a mask to this, make my foreground color black with a little bit of a D and an X, and then go on to my gradient tool. Up here, I wanna make sure that my gradient is going from foreground color to transparent, which is the second one in your basics. And then I'm just gonna make a gradient that starts like right about where his ear is, kind of diagonally, so I'm getting her face in the gradient as well just like that. So there you can see now this is just affecting the bottom of the image. Maybe I want it a bit out of her eye as well. So I can just go onto my brush tool. I already have a soft brush. Maybe take the flow down to 40% and just paint her eye area there so her eye isn't being made darker. So just like that. All right, next thing I wanna do is add one more grunge layer. So we're gonna go to File, Place Embedded again, and this time I'm gonna use number 49. And this one is gonna work well on overlay. So let's just go ahead and put it on overlay. Nice thing about the overlay is it gives these light spots just a little bit of a highlight there. And maybe I don't want so strong on his face or hers, but I don't mind it everywhere else. So rather than masking out their whole face, I'm just gonna paint out their faces on a mask here. So with black, just paint out their faces like that. Okay, next we're gonna start adding the type. So before I start adding the type, I'm gonna add some guides just so I know where to put the type. And also, if you're following along, you'll know where to put the type. So let's go to new guide layout and we're gonna make two columns with zero gutter, and that's just gonna give us a nice center line. And then for rows, I'm gonna do 11 with zero, and we're not gonna use all these lines, but I am gonna use these bottom two and also this top one. Okay, so let's go on to our type tool, T, I want my foreground color to be white because I want the text to be white that I add. And the first thing we're gonna do is just pick Helvetica here. And you should have a version of Helvetica on your computer. Otherwise you can use Arial or even Roboto. And I'm gonna use the medium. I'm gonna put it on 60 points and put it on center type and click right here and we'll type in um, an orange original film. You know, just to not completely copy Apple. <laughs> All right, then next we're going to add a title for the character. In the original, it's Tom Holland, but in our case, going to make it something else. So let's drag this down. And I want this basically to be kind of right on this second one here. Um, and the way I did that was just as I'm dragging the layer, hold down option, and that's going to make a copy of it. So let me show that to you again. 
I'm on the move tool, I'm just gonna take this, start dragging, or sorry, hold down option, start dragging it down, and it's gonna make a copy of it. So just like that. Then let's go back onto our type tool. I'm gonna change this to bold, change the points to 88, and we're just gonna write uh, Jim Sweden. And I'm gonna move this down just using the arrow key so that the top is aligned with this guide right here. All right, next we're gonna do the big type down here. So let's go ahead, hold down option, drag this down. And I want the baseline to line up with this bottom guide here. Let's go back onto our type tool and I'm gonna use Compacta Light. Um, if you don't have that font, you can use um, probably Impact would work or any really condensed font. There's some Google fonts. I'll put in the description of this video um, an alternate if you don't have Compacta. All right, we're gonna make this one really big. So we're gonna make this one 542 and we're gonna just type Gerald here. Just like that, perfect. All right, now I want to give this the grunge effect. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to take this one here, our Nuclei Concrete 5, and I'm going to make a copy of that. Again, if I hold down Option and drag this, it makes a copy. And then I'm going to delete the layer mask and get rid of the curves that's on here and take this, put this on normal, bring up the opacity. Okay, so this... Um, I can kind of move around. So I kind of like this grunge here. So maybe I'll do Command T for transform and just turn that like that. Maybe make it a bit smaller. And then I want it to be a bit lighter. So I'm going to do a curve again. The shortcut for that is Command M. So in the future, we'll just use Command M. And what I want to do here is kind of make it lighter, but not white. And I want to make these a bit darker as well. So kind of bring up, um, bring the whites toward white and the blacks toward black, but not too much. Like I don't want it to be white, white. I want it to be somewhat gray. So something like this. And then we're gonna go to channels, hold down the command key or control key on a PC and just click on the RGB right here. And you'll notice it's made a selection of all the lights. Now I can turn off this layer and on my Gerald layer, just add a mask. And voila, we have that nice grunge effect on our letters. We can even adjust this here, our mask with a curve. So Command M, remember, is the curve. And I can make the dark spots more transparent and make the white spots more um, opaque in the mask just to kind of get the effect right where we want it. So even a little more curved looks good. Now if I turn off my guides. So there you have it. That's how you recreate the cherry poster in Photoshop. Hopefully you learn some tips, tricks, and methods that you can use in your own project. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment. I do try to read them all. And if you are interested in my full texture pack, I have included a link to that in the description of this video as well. It includes all the concrete textures that we used in this video, as well as 48 more, plus a whole bunch of grunge textures and wood textures that you can use royalty free in any of your projects. So there you have it. Here are some other videos that you can check out and I'll see you next time collection of high resolution textures to create a new background or to add texture to a flat or boring background we can add a texture put it on overlay and then repeat that